Hey guys, so I dug a little deeper into this guy. He is a very famous Hearthstone player, if not the most famous Hearthstone player. But before Hearthstone, he played Magic. Now he has admitted that he cheated in Magic the Gathering. Then he went on a long rant about how Magic the Gathering players suck and how they are just big babies. And pretty much burnt every bridge he could to the ground. Since that time, he has actually made a company that worth $45 million. So let me repeat this again. This dude played another game, Hearthstone, and made $45 million. He is 26 years old. He has achieved pretty much every teenager's dream in the e-commerce, or not e-commerce, e-sports realm. And he is incredibly wealthy. But before he had all of this fame, and actually thanks to cheating in magic, he was able to find his true calling, which was Hearthstone. The most famous magic player can, can't even make a tenth of what he makes in 10 years. The magic player working 10 years. That's insane. Uh, PV, the, the magic player with the most wins, makes about 30000 a year. This dude owns a company that is $45 million. And he was caught cheating in magic. And admitted cheating in magic. Then wrote a long article. Uncensored article about how magic sucks. And how the magic community sucks. Now Wizard of Coast is on their knees begging him to come back for their MTG arena and he has accepted their plentiful money to do so, upsetting Wedge McJr. Cheeseburger. Wow. I mean, it is wow. One of the things that I look at in terms of like changing his life around, he probably did much better in Hearthstone because you can't really cheat at that game. And there's no incentive to cheat at that game uh, because you stream. And assuming that you stream everything online, even if you could cheat, it would be very foolish to. Although some people have done so in Magic before, you know, being recorded in stream. Uh, Dan Wald comes to mind in Kinrin Games, uh, where they streamed the entire match, and that's how he got caught. But anyway, this guy is the founder of Tempo Storm. He is a e celebrity and much, much bigger than the Manosaurus. When the Manosaurus was going at him, I didn't really know who he was at the time. Um, I did a little bit of research. Obviously, it was clear that he cheated. It says on his profile that he cheated in Magic and he was suspended for 18 months. I vaguely remember an angry letter that he wrote and I found it. And it was exactly what I expected it to be. It was, let's burn every single bridge I have to Magic the Gathering because I'm not coming back. So he's the owner of the esports organization, Tempo Storm, which owns teams and games including Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm, and Overwatch. He is a member of the Tempo Hearthstone roster and a popular game streamer. In 2016, he showed his successful all Brazilian Counter-Strike team to competing eSports venture Immortals. So, the guy made it. Now, if he, can, if he played Magic and was not caught cheating, he would still be scrubbing by. He would be barely getting by, like the most majority of Magic, quote, pros. But instead, he was forced not to play Magic, and he made something of his life. Let this be a lesson to you guys. It's a very clear lesson in my opinion. So I love magic. I have a magic store. It's a real magic store. I'm going to take you through a tour of our inventory. I've been buying a ton of inventory. I bought $500 yesterday. I was on the phone for probably an hour plus talking about new inventory. Another $1,000 of inventory tomorrow or today. And I love magic. I always have loved magic, but sometimes you have to view it as a hobby. This guy made something out of himself, made something very that he can be proud of. Like no one, he played magic, cheated in magic, 
was not able to play Magic anymore and then played Hearthstone and made $45 million. That's not a bad story. Had this story just continue with Magic, no way he makes $45 million with a Magic team. What is the most valuable Magic team that we have? Nobody. I've never heard of a net value of a Magic team. I've never heard of anyone assigning a net value for a Magic team. I've never heard of a brand. Like Channel Fireball, that's not really a brand. Those are just the people who run the Monopoly GPs. Right? Like, the, what team is a brand that you can think of that can sell merchandise, that can stream? What magic YouTuber has, or magic Twitch person, Twitcher, is that what they're called? What, which of these people have the followership he does? No one. And that is why Wizard of Coast is begging for him to come back, even though he has said very, very bad things about Wizard of the Coast and said very bad things about the Magic community. He has more subscribers. He has more people follow him and view him than all of the Magic community combined. All those E-celebrities, those Tolarians. A Tolarian, compared to this guy, is a small fish. That's why they don't pay Tolarian to stream MTG Arena because they don't need him when they can have this dude. And it must be bittersweet. It must, actually, why, why am I saying bittersweet? It must be the sweetest thing for them to come begging to him when he wrote this letter where it is just set everything on fire. I blanking hate you, Magic Community. I blanking hate you, DCI. I, I hate you, Wizard of Coast. And then have to have them beg for him to come back to throw money at him. It's fascinating. And it tells you how much Wizards of the Coast cares about Magic players in general and how dumb they think we are. They think we're absolutely idiots. And the reason they do this time and time again, oh, you know, this is the last core set. Magic Origins is the last core set. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, we we'll do new rotation. Oh, no, it's not. Everything they do... Like now they are announcing that there are no going to be not going to be as many master sets. I don't believe that for one second. One second, I don't I don't believe that. Maybe they take a break for a year, but think about what they're doing. We have mythic planeswalkers. We have mythic modern cards. Are these really not master sets? Like the mythic planeswalker edition, like would you not consider that like a master set? They are reprints of popular planeswalkers i i don't know i mean it sounds like a master set to me uh it, it really does doesn't it so at the end of the day wizard of the coast is behaving as i expect him to behave what is interesting is this guy had he stuck to magic and had he not cheated in magic and been pushed out of the community he would be poor how do I know this? Because every other Magic Pro in his generation is poor. If making thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars, yes, I understand. Many of you tell me in Brazil that is like a millionaire. He's a millionaire in Brazil. That's great. But I live in the U.S. and thirty-five thousand is a good salary, but not a great salary. No one's going to say that that's a good, especially if you are the best. The best garbage person in New York City makes over a hundred thousand dollars. I read a article on him. He has a very tough route. And he's been doing it. And now he owns his own garbage company business, a private company. And now they're valued at $10 million. The, if you are the best at something, like this guy is apparently the best at Hearthstone or streaming or at least the entertainment value of it. He may not be the best player, but apparently he's very fun to watch. You will make a lot of of money you will make 45 million dollars you will create your own hearthstone team i didn't even know they had hearthstone teams i assumed it was an individual game you will be valued you'll be on forbes magazine this stuff is out of the reach of any magic player and every magic player so let me repeat that again a very big magic youtuber like tolarian is peanuts compared to this dude they won't pay Tolarian to stream, and they won't pay Wedge to stream MTG Arena because, honestly, it's peanuts. They will pay this guy. 
even given his background and his very, very abrasive article that he wrote, he wrote this article himself, straight from the horse's mouth. And he, so pretty much, he got caught cheating, got banned, was upset, got banned or suspended for 18 months, got upset, went on a rampage against judges, DCI, and just everyone on social media, quit, went to Hearthstone, made $45 million, and now Wizard of the Coast is begging him to return to Magic Arena. My gosh, it's amazing. Now, props to him. Props to him. It must be, feel so vindicating for him to be paid. Now, he was chased out of this community, given a scarlet S, and chased out of the community with a broom. And now he's welcomed back with open hand, arms. The only people who are not welcoming him back is Weds and to. I don't know Tolarian stance. I'll just focus on Weds because Weds gets really upset because he's taking a big piece of the pie. Hearthstone players are taking a very large piece of the pie, the marketing pie that goes into promotions. Look at the Silver Showcase. It's a bunch of Hearthstone players who occasionally play Magic. Look at who they're paying in MTG Arena. Who are they paying? Hearthstone players. And that is upsetting the current Magic the Gathering content creators. And I can see a friction being developed. Because at the end of the day, a Hearthstone player with as many followers as this guy is far more valuable than Torrent Laren plus Wedge together. That's why they're not being paid. If you want to know the answer to every single question in life, ask yourself, who's getting paid and what are they getting paid to do? Follow the money, and the money has, I mean, it, it, felt, it went back to a dude who pretty much hates the Magic community. But this is the number one Hearthstone player, therefore he is going to get paid to promote the product to his community. You know, props on him. Uh, I, I feel really, I feel, he, A, he is a cheater. He does admit that he cheated and he was suspended. So there's no question about that. B, I think this article was very honest for him at the time. And I bet you he wishes it wasn't written because it, was, it has been deleted since that time. And C, my gosh, cheating was the best thing that he, he ever did. Because it released him from magic and the grind that is Magic the Gathering. No Magic the Gathering has a company worth $45 million. No player has a team worth that much. Because it's not an eSport, right? It's not investable. Imagine someone selling a Magic team to someone else. It's unheard of because it doesn't make any sense. You could make a Magic team of the 10 best players and you pay them with uh, Hot Pockets. No, let me put it this way. Magic the Gathering is so lame that Hot Pockets doesn't even want to sponsor Magic the Gathering. Or Magic the Gathering can't even get a sponsorship on Hot Pockets. I, I used to joke about this with my friends in like middle school and high school, like about Hot Pockets and how like we should see why we don't see advertisements on Hot Pockets. Hot Pockets used to be way more popular back then when I was younger. And it was like, oh, well, I guess... <laughs> Hot Pockets doesn't want it would never occur to us that it wasn't that Magic didn't want to be on Hot Pockets it always occurred to us that it was Hot Pockets that didn't want to be associated with Magic anyway that is it uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this article on a $45 million Hearthstone player who cheated at Magic and is now more successful than every Magic Pro combined bye guys